Hello and welcome to the Backpedalers podcast, a podcast that was very dead until I decided it wasn't this morning. I'm Jeremy and I've got Michael with me. Hello. Um, this is, so this is attempt number five to revive this podcast that basically <laughs> said do not resuscitate on it, but we're going to, I'm going to try again. Um, because... I got a new job, and now I can talk about my shitty job I had for five years. With uh, I'm so ready to hear all of it. Well, I won't tell you all of it. I'll just tell you some things, um, because it's still it's too too raw, and we need Dylan for the whole thing. Yeah, Dylan. Dylan is a necessity. Dylan's is a necessity when we talk about the uh, my old job. But uh, I'm in. I'm finishing up month number one of this new job. Now, has it already been a month? It, it'll be a month this week. It'll be a month Tuesday. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, I know. I make more money. Uh, I don't have to work in the heat, and I don't have to deal with this story. I really have been wanting to tell you for a while, but just haven't had the time to. I gotta tell you about the people in the trash, Michael. <laughs> I love hearing about the people in the trash. Oh, dude, you're not going to believe this one. Well, I, I've told you, so at my old job, we I worked at a thrift store. This is kind of common knowledge now because I spilled what I used to do because I thought that the store was going to go out of business when the shutdown initially happened, and then we came back. I'm not sure why, but we did. Um, and it was an absolute dumpster fire that that last like almost year i was there like nine months i was there was just awful 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 but one of the big things was we had my my last job uh, my last employer got money from somewhere to put put up another building that we weren't allowed to use which meant that the giant dumpster that we threw furniture in that was bad was no longer locked up behind a fence with razor wire on it, which people still climbed over sometimes. Instead, it was out in the parking lot where anyone could go through it. Oh, no. So every day, people would either be sleeping in it, shitting in it. I'm not kidding. People took dumps in the dumpster. Well, yeah, why else would they call it a dumpster? This one time, Michael, we someone threw a yoga ball in without deflating it, which is a waste of trash space. Yeah. For one thing. But someone, I think, sat on top of the gar- uh, the dumpster and just tried to poop on the uh, the yoga ball. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they took, like, a magnum dump. Like, it was, like, half a foot of poops coming Jeez. out of their butt. It was so gross. Jesus. It was like it was like a fucking bear. I <laughs> got the trash and shit on it. <laughs> it was so bad. But yeah, people would do that. People would we find crack pipes in the trash, we'd find drugs, we find blood. Of course, find, of course. Find hypodermic needles. That's the big one. That was the scary one to be real. We'd, yeah, oh, I, absolutely. I mean, it's bad when a thrift store has to have a sharps container. Is the amount of needles. But I gotta explain something, because I don't know if you had to deal with it so much at your job, um, but with the when the police removed the homeless out of the park. This is a thing that happened in our ta- in the town we live in. Did you have to deal with when they, they started just wandering around and they tried to, like... Did they try to live at your uh, place of employment? I mean, they have ever since moving here. But, like, I mean, did it increase? Ever... Not that I noticed, but it was already, like, as bad as it could be. Dude. Like, we have... Or I guess had, because I don't work, like, there, there anymore. But we had, like, people living on our pro- premises, like... Oh yeah, you Multiple worked at the people. You worked at the twenty four hour one, right? I worked at the twenty four hour one, and that had a lot of a very bad homeless problem. Can we say your job 
title? Yeah, I don't care. You're you're a pharmacist technician, right? Correct. Okay. That's still the thing. Michael and I have not had I have not had time to talk to literally any of my friends in like 3 months because of just craziness in my life. I've had Dylan over like every other night for the last couple weeks. <laughs> Is he moving here? Oh, he moved back. Oh, I was not le- That explains why he's messaging me more. He moved back a couple months ago. Didn't tell me. Uh, I asked him, hey, are you in town? And he said, I live here. And I was like, what the hell? Does he live with his mom? No, he lives with some friends he met through other friends. Oh, okay. Okay, makes sense. But, yeah, no, so... My own... I've just been dealing with crazy, like, roommate stuff, just crazy, like, everything. And the the job I was working at was just making it worse. It was just miserable. But the nothing top, this is the ultimate trash story for you, Michael. Because th- this shocked me. And I'm not, at, at this point, I'm pretty jaded to any sort of thing that has to do with the dumpster. Um, This woman scuttles into the garbage at, like, 11 in the morning. So we're, like, why, we've been... Um, we've been open for like a couple hours at this point and she like scuttled into the trash and then wouldn't, wouldn't uh, come out and we're like hey you need to get out and she like hid herself under garbage oh my god that, that's, that's part of it <laughs> so one of my co-workers had this idea he was gonna flush her out <laughs> and he didn't tell any of us. He's like, I got, I got, I have an idea. And he left. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And I, I'm like yelling at her. I'm like, okay, if you don't come out, I'm going to call the police. And she's still, she's just like pretending like she's not there. He comes out with a, a squirt bottle of a glass cleaner. And he starts squirting no! into the trash. <laughs> He's just squirting glass cleaner. <laughs> In her, he said, oh, oh no. he was like, he's, he's like, I'm not squirting it at her. It's to get, it's, it's to entice her to leave. It's like, no, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> so, so he gets out a stepladder and he looks over and he's like, out now. And she's like, the first response was, fuck you. <laughs> he's like, I, like he just repeats himself, and she's like, "You motherfuckers, you don't know what's like." Blah blah blah. And I'm like, "Okay, I don't care." I'm like, "I'm on the phone with the police now. You need to leave the premises." What well, What happened was the reason she hid under the garbage. She got naked in the trash and swapped uh, her clothes for some clothes we threw in the garbage. Oh my god! Not only that, Michael, she flashed me her vagina. No, no. Dude, I almost puked. This is one of the most ratchet <laughs> things I've seen in a while. You had to see homeless coochie? Dude, I've seen so many naked homeless people this year. It's not funny. I have no. seen I've seen dick and balls. I've seen buttholes pooping. Like, oh. It's so nasty. I mean, we still get that in my new job a little bit. We found a, a a heroin needle full of like black tar heroin in the parking lot, uh, two weeks ago. So it wasn't oh, last Friday; awesome. it was the Friday before. Yeah, it's it's. I like my new job because I don't have to worry about those people. I don't have to like confront them anymore. Which I was like asked to do on a regular basis at my last job. Is so yeah no I. <clears throat> no one that's not true a few people have yelled at me on the phone but it's like I don't get yelled at every day by people it's so nice I did get in a car accident though we can talk about that briefly yeah I want to hear about that okay so not last Tuesday Tuesday before which would have been see today's the 25th it would have been the 12th uh no it was the 13th uh I'm going to be up because that's what I do after work. Go check on things because, oh, I didn't, I have to, I have a story as to why I do this now. 
So I have to tell you this B up oh, more than just you being a pervert. No, I, I'm, I'm buddies with some of them. But yeah, I'm a humongous sex pervert, obviously, and, and Michael's a virgin. That's 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 the dynamic of this podcast. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. He, he, he's just so go fuming. on. Okay, so it was uh, I think it was last month. One of uh, one of the new. There's a new girl. Well, there's a couple new girls because shit got wild over there. I can't talk about that because I'm not supposed to know about that. Or I didn't know about that. I don't know. I don't remember anymore. My life's convoluted dumpster fire. But um, anyway, this one girl, she gets out of her car to open, and the dude whips his dick out. (laughs) And so this is three in the morning. Like, uh, that's freaky. She got back in her car and GTFO'd, which is the, the responsible thing to do. So they had to call the police because this happens. By the way, dude didn't get arrested for that because you can't arrest people for that anymore in California. Drives me up a wall. I'd be fi- pressing charges left and right with the amount of dick and balls and gross vagina I've seen in the last year. Be at the courthouse every day. But you can't do that. So anyway... Uh, I I will go over in the afternoon and see if there's any fucking weirdos around and get a fucking third Red Bull of the day. It's usually how that works. Because I've cut back to three Red Bulls. I don't know if you knew this or not. Oh, only three Red Bulls a day. It, how healthy. It was better than six and two five hours. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just, I just have a love for caffeine. You're gonna drink yourself into an early grave. Oh, dude, I have a drinking story too. I get to tell you about. <sighs> of course you do. But the, I gotta, I gotta go in continuity order here. So we gotta talk about the accident. So I'm going to be up after work, and I'm kind of like, I don't feel like dealing with stoplights. I'm just gonna go from one freeway exit to the next freeway exit. Which is usually how that works. And it saves me about 10 minutes with uh, rush hour traffic. So I I hop through freeway exits and we got a red light. And it's the uh, east first exit. And so I'm waiting at the red light and I hear all of a sudden these screeching brakes. And I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Sure enough, she rams her car right into the back of my Civic. Fucking hell. And I've... Michael, I've had that car since 2015. It was, I've had that car fucking close to six years. 2015 Honda Civic. Bought it with 15 miles on it, you know. Saved up for it. It was a big deal. It was it was my baby. It was the be- the nicest thing I owned. Is what I always said. <laughs> and then it's just fucking wrecked. She, her fucking... She tolls her car. She destroys her engine. Her airbags deploy. She's bleeding all over the place. I go out, I'm like, oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? You... I thought she was like, she had broken her nose, but she had cut her hand, and she had rubbed it on her face like a weirdo. She then, I called 911 as she proceeded to smoke three cigarettes in a row. Because she's blocking, she's blocking traffic, because she can't move her fucking car. Because she's fucking destroyed it that much that it can't be, like, fucking saved. Okay. So I try to pull mine over the best I can, but my back bumper's falling off. And the police arrive, and this was back when I was still rocking that mustache. Cop looks at me, he's like, sir, you need to sit in your car. And I'm like, oh my god. Do you think I'm going to beat this woman? The airbag did that for me. <laughs> like, seriously. So I go and sit in my car, and that's when my back pain started. And I was having to sit, and it was fucking awful. Another cop arrived. Then then the fire trucks did the biggest big dick move I've seen all year of driving the wrong way up the exit in a fire truck. All right, badass. It was so funny. And they were so proud of themselves for doing it. 
And, and so that at that point, everyone's just stuck on the East First Avenue exit. It was, it was, Michael, it was, it was fucking hilarious. Uh, then my dad showed up, and one of the firefighters was like, who the fuck is that? Because my mom, of course, had a panic attack. I called her immediately. You know my oh, mom. Of course she did. She's like, oh, I'm going to call your dad. It's going to be okay. Uh, do you need to go to the hospital? I'm like, no, no, no. Because I don't have insurance right now, which is a whole other issue. Jeremy. I lost my work insurance, and I don't get on the new work insurance for another 60 days. Okay. I thought you meant car insurance, and I was very angry at you. No, I mean health insurance. Okay, that's more reasonable. No, I have I have good car insurance, although I'm a little mad at them, but that's neither here nor there. So, we take it to Whitmire Collision, and... Um, can't do anything, then USAA was closed, so we couldn't do anything. We, we filed the claim online, which my dad forgot his password, because I, sh- I just pay a portion of auto insurance, and we just have it all bundled together. It saves money that way. Okay. And, especially because, like, you know, I, I have the cheapest insurance of everyone in the family, because up until this point, I'd never been in an accident. Whereas we all remember when my sister flipped her Civic on Dogtown and was just upside down for like half an hour. <laughs> she was like going 80 on Dogtown Road in Megalia. Lost control. What a fl- fucking monster. Just, just in the middle of the fucking night. And some weird rednecks found her. That was the whole fucking thing. My my sister is just a fucking creature. She's mad at me too, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so anyway, I I lose my car. Then USA is like, yeah, we're totaling it out. And I'm like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, well, how long do I have? And it's like, oh yeah, you have till Wednesday to get a new car, because then we're gonna start not paying for your rental. Which I gave you a review of my rental, right? The the camera, yes. the most not fun car I've ever driven. Actually, that's not true. I drove my my last girlfriend's hatchback that literally had no inside door panel on the driver's side. That was the that was the shittiest car I've probably driven in a while. The Camry was just disappointing. It was a it was the most disappointing car I've driven in a while. But I, I got a new car, I got a new Civic, and I, I I may have hit 90 in it this morning while everyone was at church. Because it's the best time to drive like a, like a madman because no one's patrolling. No one's on Nord at uh, 8 o'clock on a Sunday. It's great. If you say so, Jeremy. It's great. Mr. I walk on Nord. Oh, I guess you didn't hear that my car's working again. Oh, no. No, that's a bizarre miracle. Yeah, um, it's been working for like a month, month and a half or so. That's good. How long till it doesn't work anymore? (laughs) That's the question. Do you are the kiss of death for cars? It's like your fucking. I pre- really am. It's your fucking presence. All right, we gotta we gotta go through your cars here because I find this amusing. Probably no one else does, but I find it amusing how many cars you've gone through. I've known you since 2013. How many cars have you fucking gone through since then? Let's see: Prelude, Grand Cherokee, Prius, um, Outback. Forgot about the album. and now HHR. So let's start with the Prelude. So I I remember the Prelude was all fucked up by the time I realized you even had a car. So that was because I uh, I was on my way to a movie theater in Sacramento, and I was in a parking lot, and I was like driving looking for a parking space, 
And this lady decided she was going to back out without looking behind her. And so she backed into my car <laughs> and her, you know, her car stops moving and she thinks, why isn't my car moving? Better floor it. So she floors it <laughs> trying to reverse through my car. <laughs> I did not know this happened. <laughs> my car is full of people. All, all, is it four of us? Yeah, I think it's four of us in it. All four of us are just staring, dead silent. Just like, ah, uh, I guess one of us is dying today. That's cool. Oh my God, that's actually a worse trip than when we went to San Francisco with my ex and Dylan. <laughs> And this lady tried her best to, like, reverse over my car, but she couldn't make it. So eventually she looked in her mirror and realized, oh, there's a there's a car there. Uh, <laughs> and so I exchanged info with her. Uh, I was not, my car was not insured at this point in time, but I am a luck god. And so uh, her insurance covered everything. Mm-hmm. Even though I wasn't insured, they just never asked about my insurance. Well, you, like, yeah, we'll we'll give you money. Well, she was at fault, so it better have even if you were insured or not insured. I've been told in California, if you don't have insurance, it's your fault, even if it's not your fault. But I heard that from my mom, and she's very unreliable. <laughs> it's true. Your mom's a sweet woman, but you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. You She's sh- not a good source of information. You should have insurance, though. I I should. Um, I I had just lost my insurance for some reason or another. I mean, it happens, you know. Um, but anyways, uh, they 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 tell me they're like, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna give you money to repair your car, and I'm like, cool. So. I take it to a shop and they're like, okay, we need to replace like the, we need to replace the door because the entire door crumpled inwards. Yeah. And I'm like, sure, go ahead. And so for a couple of weeks, they were like looking around trying to find a replacement for it. Eventually they give me a call and they're like, yeah, we're not going to be able to repair your car. And I'm like, cool. So I spent like a good number of weeks driving around with a car where the right side of it was just all crumpled inwards. You couldn't use the doors to get into the car. It was beautiful. <laughs> then you had the uh, the Jeep. So, uh, that was after f- the point. After the point where they decided that they weren't going to be able to repair the Prelude, they were like, "Here, we'll just give you money to get a new car." And I'm like, "That sounds cool." Uh, while I was waiting for that money to arrive, one day my sister asks me, "Hey, can I borrow your car?" I need to, like, drive my children somewhere. And me, being the nice guy I am, I'm like, sure, you can borrow my car if you need to drive your children somewhere. Uh, so, your sister. So, so she takes my car. She, like, drops me off at work, tells me I'll pick you up from work tonight. I get off work. She calls me, and she goes, hey, uh, a taxi is going to be picking you up tonight to bring you home. When they get here, I'll pay for it. So. <laughs> I I take a taxi back home wondering, you know, what the hell happened. Get home. She tells me, yeah, my husband drove your car, drove it off the highway, flipped it over. It's totaled. Why? Why is that so, awful man driving your car around? Car one, prelude gone. Not my fault. Then I get the Grand Cherokee. That one, I'm driving it for like two weeks, and suddenly smoke starts coming out of the hood, and I hear a boom. Uh, transmission goes out. I think it was the transmission, if I remember right. It's been some years. Yeah, the, but it, it did what all Chrysler products do. Died. I, uh... I had bought the Cherokee from my brother-in-law's dad because he was looking to sell it, and this was right as we got the money uh, from the Prelude accident. 
And so my mom was just like, hey, I'll give you this check if you, you know, give me the car. And he goes, deal. So we get the Cherokee. I drive it around for like two weeks. Transmission explodes. I bring it back to him. And I'm like, hey, like the car you gave me broke down pretty much immediately. Are you a handyman? Can you fix it? And he's like, I think I can fix it. So he fills around with it for a while. Can't fix it. (laughs) So I'm like, great. Car two, gone. Not my fault. Then I get the uh, the Prius. Mm-hmm. I have the Prius for around a year. Yeah, and you... then it starts like randomly dying while I'm driving it. Mm-hmm. Like I would be driving it around and then suddenly it would just like cut the power. And I'd have to pull off on the side of the road, start it again, and then it would start normally, drive for like 10 minutes, and then the power would die. And I just had to keep repeating that every like 10 to 15 minutes where it would just die in the middle of driving and I'd have to pull over and restart it. Uh, Then eventually uh, I was driving it one day. It uh, it died on the side of the road, wouldn't restart. Mm -hmm. Um, I did have a mechanic take a look at it. He told me that it was a problem with, uh, what was it? He referred to it as uh, one of the high-voltage connections in the car. Told me that a Prius specialist would have to repair it, and it would be cheaper to just get a new car than to try yes. to repair it. Oh, yes, it, yeah. So, because I, I didn't have the money at the time to just go, oh, I'm going to get a new car. Hmm. So I drove it until it died, and then it was dead. So, car three gone. You can say it's my fault or not. I think it's debatable. I drove it until it was dead. Well, we got to talk about what happened to the car after it was dead. Okay, because that's, a fair that, point. that's so funny. The, I remember. So you were living in? weren't you living in a garage or something? That was right after the campfire, yeah. correct? It was right after the fire. I was living. Kind of on someone's couch, kind of in their garage. Some nights I would sleep uh, inside. Some nights I had to sleep outside. Outside in the garage. Um, so, car breaks down for good. I have it towed. They park it, like, uh, across the street from where I'm staying. And I'm like, all right, I'll figure out something to do with it. So it's sitting there. Then I move back in with my parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm with my parents. I'm like, yeah, my car is just sitting, just sitting in Chico. I don't know what to do with it. And uh, I'm like, I'll I'll do something with it eventually. And I'm chilling. Like a, a week or two goes by and my dad goes, hey, this was in the mail. I open it up. It was something that had been sent to me a week prior to him giving it to me that said, uh, that said, hey, you have one week to move your car or the city will tow it at your expense. <laughs> Jesus, and dude. So it had been it had been at my house for a week. My dad didn't give it to me until the day that uh, my time was up. And, you know, he gives it to me at, like, 8 at night, so it's not like I can go do anything about it. It's already been towed at that point. Jesus. So I'm like, awesome. I owe the city money because my dad hid mail from me. Because your dad's a fucking psychopathic weirdo. Because my dad is a literal psychopath, yeah. And so... I am getting so many uh, messages right now, it's ridiculous, sorry. Sorry. You should mute your device. I can't mute my desktop because you're going through the shit. Yeah. Um, so Prius is dead, gets towed by the city. It's gone. So then I get an Outback and I had the Outback for about a year. And then I got into a crash because... I was checking my mirror to see how bad my hair looked. And 
I looked back at the road, saw the person in front of me had stopped moving, slammed on the brakes, rear-ended them. <laughs> and guess who picked him up from, uh, where was that? I'm t- it was right next to where I rent to Enterprise Reynolds. Yeah, it was. Because I got you. I went and picked you up. <laughs> Yeah, when they when they towed my car away, I went with them, got everything out of my car, and you came and picked me up. Was that I, when was that? I'm trying to remember. Was it when I was still living with the racists, or was it when I was living here? It was December of 2019. Oh, I was living with the racists. That was when I was having um, that gross fling with someone we won't mention on here. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. That you um, know, and I don't think you know that I fucking was a fucking goblin and did that. Um, so so yeah, I, I crashed the Subaru. Fourth vehicle gone. Finally my fault, objectively. And then I was without a car for close to a year. And then my mom is like, hey, I'm going to get a new car. I'm going to give you my old car. And I'm like, sure, that sounds great. I need a vehicle. So she gives me her uh, her Chevy HHR. Mm-hmm. I have it for 10 days. And the battery dies. <laughs> and that, that's when we got you the bike, right? No, no, you, uh, we got the bike right after I lost the Outback. Oh, that's right, okay. The bike that so for you that, broke. Like, so for like the year between the Outback and the Chevy, I was biking to work. And you broke the bike. Well, we don't know what's going on with the bike. We tried to put the new tube on it and it went flat again. And I told you to go, go to Northrim and have them do it for you. And I didn't have a vehicle to get to Northrim. You could have walked it. It's not that far. That's that's Anyways. that's not illogical. That's pretty logical. I guess I just I didn't want to go on that walk on my days off when I was walking to work. Then that, on my days that's, of work, that also makes sense too. But anyways, so ten days after I get the Chevy HHR, battery dies. So I get a friend to jump it for me. Like two days later, battery dies. Yeah. I get a friend to try to jump it for me. It won't jump. Mm-hmm. Means... Battery's just fucking dead, dead. Yeah, that happened uh, in my Civic, too. And in my Tauros. Took me, let's see, from August to, I want to say it was just last month. So it took me like six, seven months of working on the Chevy to finally get it fixed and working again. Yeah. Ain't... And so now, after all this time, I finally have a working car again. That's good. We'll see how long it works. <sighs> yep. <laughs> God, so, um... Did I ever tell you about the... You were you saw the first car I ever had, the Ford Taurus, because we picked you up one day when you ordered a double cheeseburger hold the uh, burger or whatever. When you used yes. to do that fucking thing where you go to McDonald's and you'd order something and order it without meat or order it without yeah. bread. <laughs> you fucking Dylan were goblins. This would be high school. But that car, that car got fucked up. Well, it, I bought it, and it was f- fucking had issues. So it leaked power steering fluid. Like, oh, shit. I go through a quart of power steering fluid every three weeks. It's so expensive. Um, and, like, it, so it dr- steered, I called it a, the tank car, because it was like steering a tank. It was so, so hard. Unnecessarily hard. Um, I backed into... Did I ever tell you about how I backed into a mailbox in it? No, you fucking dumbass. Oh, no. No, you want to know the real dumbass thing? Yes. So I did a stupid... A stupid... I can't believe I fucking did this. I can't believe I'm telling you I did this, because I've never told anyone this. So I go... I picked up this girl that I had like a crush on 
I can't even remember her name, to be honest. That that's how annoying this is. It's somewhat I liked in high like either high school or middle school. I don't know. And um I picked her up and she was like, Yeah, my boyfriend's being like weird and stuff and I'm like, Oh, woman in trouble, gotta go rescue. Because that's that's my life. I don't know if you know that or not. Make these poor decisions like that. Anyway, so I fucking go to uh, pick her up, and I tucked a gun under the seat. Mind you, Michael, it didn't have any bullets in it. So, like, I was like, oh, I'm just going to wave it around if there's a problem. Which, thankfully, there wasn't, but that that's, like, sketch AF to do. And so it kind of, like, rolled around in the back seat. And she was like, oh, I put my stuff back there. She, like, put her backpack and stuff, like, by it. And, like, thankfully didn't see it. But uh, I dropped her off at our house. We, like, made out. And I left. Uh, That morning, I get home. And I'm, like, I'm, like, getting... Who the fuck's laughing? Uh, That is Matt, Corey, and Tony. Okay, that sounded like the mix that I remembered. Um... So, I fucking, I go to get our mail. It was back when we lived on the canyon and all the mailboxes were at the end of the street. And yeah. I'm like, where's the gun? And I, like, literally screamed, that bitch stole my gun, and I backed right into our mailbox. You fucking dipshit. Not only did I back into our mailbox, I knocked three mailboxes off the post. Oh, my God. And dented the fuck out of it. And then, like, I went... I had to tell the neighbors that I did that. And they're like, well, I'm glad that you're you're a responsible man, blah, blah, blah. Like, everything that old people say. It's like, fuck, shut up. I don't fucking care. I was fucking made to by my mom. <laughs> and, like, thanks, she didn't steal the gun, spoilers. So it was completely made it even more of a waste. I had to pay to... The only box I actually, like, really damaged was my my mailbox. So I only had to pay for that, and I had to, like, just put the posts back in and reattach mailboxes. And then Shane made fun of me, which is the worst part of the story. Yeah, there's no recovering from Shane making fun of you. It was the same day he missed. He was drinking pineapple soda in our summer school math class, and he missed his mouth and got it all over his notes. Classic. This is a fucking Shane move if I've ever seen it. But yeah, no, I fucked that car up. Uh, I bent the front right axle on that. Getting chased by rednecks. <sighs> that was in high school, though. I ran over a few parking... The, the things in parking lots that you're not supposed to run over that are, in, like, at each space. Yeah. I ran over four of them. Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, bent the front right axle. Um, then, I, the reason... No, that's not how I got rid of that car. What got what did it was I was driving from Chico to Paradise. I had just had, like, an interview or something for a job that... It was at Kohl's, I think. Yeah. And I had a group interview, and it, was, it didn't go well. Because that's how Kohl's works. And, uh... I was driving on the Skyway, and smoke started coming out all my vents. And I literally couldn't drive the fucking thing. It had to have it towed up to paradise. Um, uh, yeah. My family wasn't in town. That was a whole thing that happened. And so, then after that, I couldn't drive with the AC on. And, you know, summer's here getting to, like, the hundreds of degrees. And it was fucking miserable. It was a miserable summer of driving that fucking thing. But I, I got the Civic, and the Civic was great until um, I got hit by that dumb bitch. So now I have a new Civic. <laughs> it's pretty fucking awesome. But I didn't tell you about my alcohol poisoning. What happened? <sighs> that happened. Let's hear it, Jeremy. That was last, last weekend. Uh, Talia had a party, my sister, with her friends, and I, she's like, go buy some Jose Cuervo. And I said, sure. Little did she know that I would drink the entire bottle of the Jose Cuervo 
an entire bottle of Tito's vodka and something like it it contradicts. Some people said I drank seven white claws. Some people said I drank 15. I don't fucking know. I don't remember, but I vomited so hard. I broke a blood vessel in my eye. Oh my God, Jeremy. And I injured my lungs to the point where Friday was the first day I could laugh without being in agony. Like I couldn't laugh. I couldn't cough. I couldn't sneeze. And I couldn't yawn without being in pain. God. It was rough. I would, I Why pe- are you like this? I don't drink often anymore, but I've hit this point where I can't drink like that anymore. <laughs> You're a gremlin, Jeremy. I'm a gremlin? You you are literally the definition of gremlin for any vehicle. You're a gremlin of a person. I'm a gremlin (laughs) of a driver. I wonder how shitty my hair is. Oh, I ran into the back of a person's car. Was she cute? Uh, It was a dude. Was he cute? I'm pulling for you. He was I. Okay. What would you, would you, in a scale of one to ten? I don't fucking remember, man. This was two years ago. It wasn't, though. It was, it doesn't feel like two years ago. It was two years and four months ago. That, you just pulled those numbers out of your ass. Maybe it wasn't two years and four months. How long ago was that? Sorry, that was a year and four months. Yeah, that's that's totally wrong. That's more like it. (laughs) Fucking idiot. Eh, one year, two year, what's the difference? A lot. (laughs) A fucking lot. A lot's happened. (laughs) It's fucking like three years time. But yeah, no, I got a new job and it's pretty sick. And that's all I have. That's awesome, man. I know. I'm so fucking happy. Thank you. I think you still make more money than me, though. I probably do. What do you make now? Uh, I'm making seventeen fifty an hour. Oh, I, I'm just under you, then. Okay. Once again, Michael, we're we're, we're neck and neck in wages. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. I get to, I just get to work on computers pretty much all day. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, I get to go through files and stuff and set up files. It's dope. I have to call people all day, and I hate that. I mean, I answer a phone, all, like, pretty much all day, too. That's part of my job. But I can't even get into any further into what my job is now. But yeah, no. I do you have anything else to add to this? This is a solid return here. Uh I don't know. I could uh I could tell you about a uh a gremlin I had at work to match your uh dumpster shitter stories. Sure. One one more one more gremlin. And then I'll save some stuff for another episode. So I picked up a shift in Orland, and so I was working there out of town, and uh, this guy calls up, and he's like, he's like, hey, so, let me remember how this goes. So he calls, and he's saying, hey, so, I just got out of the hospital, and my medications were called over to a CVS, but I don't want to give them a CVS, I want to get them with you guys. So I'm like, okay. I will go ahead and send a fax over to CVS. I will tell them that we want the prescription here. And when they send the prescriptions over to us, we'll we'll get them filled for you. And he goes, all right. uh, So if I call back in like an hour, do you think it'll be ready? And I was like, I don't know. Uh, It really depends on how long it takes CVS to get back to us. And he goes, okay, I'll call you in an hour. And I'm like, all right, 
hopefully we hear from them by then. So I get off the phone and an hour later, my uh, because it's a it's a weekend. So it's just me and one pharmacist and we're the only two people working all day. Mm -hmm. And so my pharmacist picks up the phone and I hear him say, you know, you know, his little, you know, hello, this is Walgreens, blah, blah, blah. And then I hear him uh, saying, uh, no, we haven't received anything from CVS yet. You know, they haven't sent us anything. And then I just hear screaming over the phone. From, from the person going, calling? Like, huh? From the person calling? Yes, person calling, screaming over the phone. And then I just hear my, my pharmacist start repeating over and over, like, like look, I don't work at CVS. I don't control how long it takes them to send us stuff. I work for Walgreens. I can't do anything until CVS sends it to us. I don't work there. I don't control them. <laughs> They're yelling at the wrong person. <laughs> and he's just repeating this over and over because the guy will not stop screaming at him. And it goes on for like a couple minutes. And then finally he gets off the phone and I'm like, oh, were you talking to, let's call him Paul. I'm like, oh, were you talking to Paul? And he goes, ah, yes. And I'm like, yeah, I told him, like, we may or may not even have it in an hour. I don't know why he expected it. My pharmacist is like, you know, well, it is it is what it is. So, like, ten minutes pass. The phone rings again. I pick up the phone. It's Paul. And he's like, hey, I just talked to CVS. Uh, they said they're going to send it to you. And I'm like, that's great. He goes, yeah. So do you have it? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't, I don't have it quite yet. Uh, <laughs> you, you just spoke with them and he goes, yeah. I'm like, all right, it takes, it takes a little bit for the transfer to go through. Give us some more time. He's like, okay, sounds good. And so he gets off the phone and you know, I'm like, yep, Paul was calling again. He's very eager to get his medication. That's a nice so, way of putting it. We wait again for another like 15 minutes. Boom. Fax from CVS. They sent us the prescriptions. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we get it, I start typing it up in my computer doing data entry and the phone rings. So I pick it up. It's Paul. Did you get it yet? I tell him, yes, I did, Paul. We just received it. I'm working on it right now. And he goes, great. How long do you think it's going to take? I'm like, well, there are, God, how many of them? There were like five or six medications. Oh, like, There's so many medications. Uh, I got to type them all up. Got to get them all filled. Give me so-and-so amount of time. He's like, okay, I'll see you, I'll see you then. So he gets off the phone. So I, I type up all his medications. I'm getting them all filled. I tell, uh, I tell my pharmacist, hey, so uh, there is a problem getting his TRICARE to go through. If you don't know what TRICARE is, it's uh, military insurance. Oh, okay. So the guy was probably a veteran. And so yeah. I told my pharmacist, hey, there was a problem getting his TRICARE to go through. I need to see his card. Uh, I went ahead and cashed these all out. Let me know when he shows up. Because my pharmacist told me right off the bat, he knows nothing about insurance. So I tell him, uh, you know, when... When Paul shows up, let me know. I'll come fix the insurance on these. You know, when you see that they're all, you know, like 80 to $200 a piece, that's because I haven't built insurance yet. I'll fix it. And he's like, yeah, sure. Sounds great. So I'm filling everything. Paul shows up. I go over. I'm like, hey, Paul, you know, uh, I had some trouble getting your TRICARE to go through. Uh, can I see your card? And he goes, sure. So he gives me the card. I look. Everything I have in the computer is correct. I try every trick in the book I can think of to try to get his insurance to go through. Nothing's working. So his TRICARE just keeps rejecting it every time. And I tell him, I'm like, well, Paul, like, uh, I've done everything that I know how to do. I can't get your insurance to go through. And he's like, well, what do we do now? And I tell him, well, if I'm being honest, I'm still relatively new at this job. Tomorrow, somebody more experienced than me should be here. Hopefully, they can figure out what the problem is with your insurance and they can get it fixed. And he tells me, well, I need it right now. And I'm like, well, I understand that you need it, but, like, 
I don't know what to do. I can't get it through the insurance. Like, if you get it now, you're going to be paying a lot of money. And he goes, well, can't you call TRICARE and figure it out? I look at the clock. It's five minutes until we close. I tell him, well, Paul, these calls usually take, like, 30 minutes to complete. And we close in five minutes. I'm not going to call TRICARE when it's so close to closing time. You'll have to, if you want it through the insurance, you'll have to come back tomorrow. And he flips out. And he starts yelling all this stuff about, uh, uh, you go anywhere else and you'll hear the customer's always right. Not here at, uh, not here at Walgreens. They don't care at all about customer service. <laughs> anywhere else you go, if somebody is in line before closing time, they will get helped. Not here at Walgreens. If, uh, who cares if you're in line? We need to go home. And I just kind of shrug. I'm like, sorry, Paul. Like, I'm not going to stay late to make this phone call for you. And he just keeps flipping out, keeps screaming. And my pharmacist comes over and he's like, hey, so like, can you make the call? Like, as soon as it hits six o'clock and it's time to go home, you can hang up. But like for five minutes, can you try to make the call? And I tell him, sure. Like, I have no problem trying to make the call in five minutes. But I, I have plans. I'm not going to stay late just because Paul needs his medication. So I go. I make the phone call. I get through to TRICARE's automated line. I go through all of their little questions, you know. What's the patient's date of birth? What's their TRICARE number? Blah, 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 blah. I go through the system, and in the end, it just tells me, all right, this patient has active TRICARE coverage. Here is their member ID. Here is their date of birth on file. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Gives me the numbers I already have. So the call accomplishes absolutely nothing. And I tell this to Paul, and he... Or no, I tell my pharmacist that, and my pharmacist tells Paul. And Paul goes, well, I need this medication right now. I'm not going to pay hundreds of dollars for it. Can I get, like, a two-day supply on everything right now? And my pharmacist comes back to me, and he's like, Michael, I know it's six. I know you want to go home. Would you would you be willing to change all of his 30-day supplies to two-day supplies so he can get them now? And I'm like, sure, whatever. I'll do it. I, I don't care that I have plans, whatever. So I refill all of his medications to a two-day supply, and I give them to my pharmacist. I'm like, all right. You can verify these and ring Paul up. I'm going home. And I walk out the door. And Paul looks at me and goes, where do you think you're going? You need to you need to uh, fix my medication. And I'm like, no, Paul. I already changed them to two-day supplies. Now the pharmacist is doing the paperwork, and then I'll ring you up. And he goes, well, I need to know how expensive it is. I need to know if I can afford a two-day supply. And I tell him, that's why he's doing the paperwork, Paul. It's in his hands, not mine. See ya. And I walk off, and Paul is just furious. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did anything come of it? Did you get in trouble at all? No, no, not at all. No, that's good. <laughs> like, the pharmacist had no idea even how to bill insurance. So, like... When I told him I didn't know what to do, he was just like, yeah, then that means nothing can be done. And he was just totally accepting of it. <laughs> Paul, Paul was flipping out, screaming the whole time. But, like, I'm so used to it, I don't give a shit what the customer thinks. Bro, I'm so glad I'm not in customer service anymore. Yeah. It's so nice. <laughs> I uh, I dealt with one of our resident loonies today. He uh, apparently when we got to work, when we opened up at 10 this morning, the front register cashier came over to my pharmacist and said, hey, there's a guy in the bathroom naked showering in the, in the uh, sink. He says that he's here to get his COVID vaccine. Are you even doing and, those? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. My sister got one from you, right? Yeah, I, I, uh, I had to call your sister and ask her if she won her shot, and it was really funny to me. Oh, um, 
So I was like, hey, Jeremy would be pissed if I just told him, hey, I just called your sister, winky face. I wouldn't have cared. You would have been but, better uh, than anyone she's dated. <laughs> just dated fucking trash. Well, that's neither here nor there. But, uh, as soon as, uh, as soon as the cashier said, like, yeah, this guy was bathing naked in the sink, said he needs his COVID vaccine, my pharmacist immediately uh, called by name who it was going to be. Jesus. That's disgusting. Yeah. Uh, but he was right. He knew exactly who it was going to be. It's our resident lunatic. Why does he feel get naked in the bathroom? That's so fucking weird. I don't know. He has something seriously wrong in the head. Yeah. Makes sense. Sh- All right. I think this is a good point to call the episode. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Dude, I... I don't know how long it's been. I just know that Dylan just messaged me that he's here. It's about 56 minutes. So, anyway. Oh, wow. Good to talk to you, dude. It's been good. We'll have to do this again. Yeah, in two years. And yeah, when it's time for uh, the sixth revival of Backpedlers. <laughs> Maybe this one will get released. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good one. You too, man. See ya. See ya.